I'm a freak, man, for real. I got lotion on my d I put out a call last week for a book club, or a movie club, rather, where I told everyone in my audience with a week advance, you need to watch 1917 so we can have an adult discussion about it. If you forgot, that's okay, but that's no longer on me. I took notes throughout, not critical notes. I took down my feelings, converted those feelings into talking points and attempted to make a PowerPoint. In that moment, I realized I don't know how to use PowerPoint. So I gave up. So I'm doing the mogul mail thing of, I have like 30 tabs open and I'm gonna be going through those tabs. I'm Put a one in minutes. chat if you did I'm your looking. homework. I did this for your sake because I'm gonna be talking about things, specific things from the movie. But I also realized a lot of you probably didn't do that. So I did pull up clips to help uh, and and little visual aids because I know you guys are kind of stupid. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is my 1917 review. Ah, red letter media. So 1917, let me, here's my visual aids. It's a bunch of tabs, don't judge me. 1917 is a World War I movie, okay? About two dudes trying to get a message to another squad, whatever, to save them from certain death. It is the story of, of their travel, their struggle. And I think the most noteworthy and arguably the most unique thing about this movie is it is a one take or it is made to look, it is edited and shot uh, to, to look like it's all done in one take, no cuts. I thought the movie was okay. If that's it, if you don't wanna hear another word, I think it was an okay movie. I wouldn't say it was bad. I wouldn't say it was amazing. I have a little cheat sheet of like my feelings and my notes throughout to help me through this. I think over the three years of talking about this movie, people thought I hated it more than I did because you know how you get more radicalized in something the more you feel ostracized for it? I think that's what happened to 1917. I saw it, my original opinion was, it was okay, and then everyone was like, no, it's a masterpiece, so then I start to become more radicalized. Now, before we move on, uh, before we get into the points here, I'd like to first say, we're all friends here. Guys, this is such a jank PowerPoint. <laughs> we're all friends here. I'm on the left, chat, you're on the right. I think at the end of the day, if you liked the movie, or you watched the movie, rather, and you start to identify with the points I'm making, then we probably have similar, t similar tastes. If you don't identify with the points I make, then we probably don't have similar tastes and that's okay. Nobody's wrong. We're white and black and we're hugging. Is that fair? And by the way, spoilers for the movie. This is a book club, so you should have watched it. First, I'm gonna start with the good. 1917 is not irredeemably bad. I said it was okay. So what made it okay? I liked the whole intro of the movie up until the point where they exit uh, uh, the German bunker. I found all of that pretty engaging for the most part. I thought the use of the one take was decent there, specifically in the British trenches I liked. I liked his interactions with the generals and them going to no man's land. I liked all that. I thought that was a good use of the one take. Next, what arguably makes this movie not bad for me, the ending sequence. I think the ending sequence is powerful beautiful cinematically well done our main character Schofield running to the general the stakes what's on the line the explosions it being a one take works so well that whole uninterrupted him walking from the forest down the line through the people that being a one take I think serves really well for the storytelling it has purpose this is all going to be a part later this scene single-handedly brings up the entire movie multiple points in my final review this scene is not only beautiful, but it has what I, I would describe it as purpose. Him walking this whole long walk, it builds tension and it, it matters. This being a one take to me is the perfect example of when to use a, a one to a non-cut shot. Okay, so I'm giving the movie credit where credit is due. Uh, what else? Hold on, let me see if I had anything else nice I wanted to say. <laughs> Another thing I liked, it was beautifully shot. The cinematography of 1917 is undoubtedly uh, one of the best looking war movies I've ever seen. This scene, a lot of people thought I didn't give this scene enough credit. Well, here it is. This scene was beautiful. The nighttime scenes were beautiful. It, the, the, the grass, the fields, every scene is gorgeous. I loved the way it looked. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the extent 
of the nice things I have to say about this movie. First off, <clears throat> people describe 1917 as amazing, but I don't like using that word because there are amazing movies out there about war. If 1917 is amazing, what word do you reserve for Saving Private Ryan? I would use amazing. I've heard all of these things about 1917. Unfortunately for 1917, it's a war movie and other war movies exist that are better in basically every other way. Let me explain some, some issues I have here. Uh, one of the greatest things about 1917 and one of the biggest talking points, everyone is talking about the movie being a one take. Unfortunately for me, uh, and again, I'm not telling you you're wrong, this is my opinion, that was one of the worst parts about the movie, it being a, a, a one take or, or a fake one take. Um, I know people are saying it's not a one take. It's shot to look like one. Please stop getting technical. You know what I'm saying. It being disguised to look like a one take, I actually feel hurts the movie intensely. Like, give me the chance to explain what I mean by that. There are issues with Lord of the Rings, but I can forgive it because the Lord of the Rings is a masterpiece. There's issues with Saving Private Ryan, but I can forgive it because everything else rises to the occasion. With 1917, there are issues and I don't think everything else justifies those issues. For example, the movie being a one take causes a lot of what I would call video game popping, which is the camera will turn one direction and then when it turns back around, there's all this new shit here and they have to do that because it never cuts. What I mean by that is our characters need to get from this city to this city. So the entire movie is them walking, which would be kind of boring. So every once in a while, something happens where we'll turn pan this way and then we turn, oh look, a city. And I go, the city wasn't there. And I know, suspension of disbelief. I can do that for some movies. I don't think 1917, its story, its acting, anything about it rose to the occasion enough to where I can forgive it for that. Let me give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about here. This is right after, again, you had to have seen the movie. I'm not gonna hold your hand. This is right after the plane crash scene and the, one of the main characters dies. So this battalion shows up of like four dudes. And at first I go, okay, I guess it's fair, four dudes, you know, whatever. But then the camera pans and it's a battalion of maybe one to 200 men. Where the fuck did these guys come from without any sound, anything? You guys need to understand, 30 seconds ago, we had a quiet, slow, depressing death scene. And then this happening immediately pulled me out of it. Now I wanna be clear here, chat. This doesn't have to bother you. I'm not telling you this makes it a bad movie. I'm saying for me, these types of things are distracting. When you're telling me this is a masterpiece, my brain goes into it going, I expect a masterpiece and I'm sorry, the size of this battalion took me out of the sea and I went, so why do I bring that up? We didn't have to do this. This is a choice by the director, these little flaws, because he wanted it to be all one take. Here's my big overarching point, ready? I don't think this movie should have been a one take. I don't think this movie should have been a one take at all. I don't think the story benefited. In fact, I think the story was harmed because of this being a uh, disguised one take. It is a story about two men traveling, how many miles? Eight hours worth of miles uh, to deliver a message. My biggest complaint about this movie, are you guys ready for it? It's boring. There are so many scenes of just two guys walking, a group of guys sitting, a group of guys doing nothing, okay? Now here's where the nerds in chat, well, war is boring. Cool, I didn't sign up for war. I'm watching a movie and at the end of the day, movies are supposed to impact you in some way, emotionally make you laugh, make you cry. They're not supposed to make you bored. If you don't see what I'm saying, I have a scene that drives me I was mind boggled. The scene of him in the back of the caravan is so obviously a scene to have the character move a distance without any issue. It just was so boring. There were multiple times in this movie where I did the red letter media thing where I went and cut. We don't need to see nothing conversations that have no, they're just here so our characters can walk from point A to point B because this is a one take. This driving scene is pain 
painstakingly boring. And all of this is to get him to the city. Normally you would cut this. Ready? Watch. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. There is no meaningful conversation that goes on here. There is none. It just doesn't end. And I found it so boring. In a, in a movie that doesn't cut, you have to see everything. We get back into the car and we have another painstakingly long so car scene. And I'm sitting here thinking, why not cut this? Why not cut this out? Oh, I know because of an artistic choice to not have cuts, but it's not working here. One takes work if the story is very contained because traveling is boring. Have you guys ever had a bad DM? in in D, D, a bad dm makes you travel for four days five days six days okay same thing with movies cut out the travel cut out all this shit. there are too many scenes where i think cuts would have been useful i think there are too many scenes where we could have cut out some of this fat also this is now more nitpicking there were more than a few occasions in this movie where i rolled my eyes to the point where they fell out of my head and this is a war movie right and frankly there are too many moments in this that make me go, are you fucking kidding me this is a scene where our main character here gets blown up this is our main character right here now remember all a one take there are no time jumps so if you see him five minutes later in the movie you're seeing him five minutes later in the reality of the story Okay, so let's look at this real quick. I, I'm all about suspending disbelief. If you're standing next to the tripwire, you are in the range of the explosive of said tripwire. We're talking German engineering here, folks. So our main character is mangled or dead, right? Here is our main character seconds later in rubble. He is unconscious from the explosion. So something is wrong with him, right? Well, we cut to him outside and uh, yeah, he's walking and he's fine and he's just coughing. He's not bleeding. He's not scraped. In fact, the funniest part of all this, his biggest complaint is he has dust in his eyes. He has dust in his eyes. Ah! This is him. He's fine. He doesn't take any time to recover. He kind of stumbles, coughs, waters out his eyes, and continues walking. Well, they had to, Wubby. It's a one take. Then don't make it a one take. It's that easy. If this type of shit happens throughout the movie, then don't make it a one take. Later, in one of my other least favorite scenes, his friend dies in just this absolutely ridiculous and frustrating way. If you're gonna have people dying like Attack on Titan in these inst- Oh my God, the main character just died! Please don't give the main character the most insane plot armor. Immediately when this happens, it takes me out of the movie. I go, okay, so this guy's not gonna die. Instantly, all tension is gone for me. Here's another example, gorgeous scene. Love the music, love the camera work, love everything about this. You ready? They're realizing they're enemies, and... What in the stormtrooper fuck is this chase scene? Here's, here comes the cope. Well, maybe he didn't want to kill him. Maybe he was a good German. Maybe he was a bad shot. There are four more Germans that chase him throughout this scene. Every one of them is firing like this. <laughs> Why? Why is that the case? Well, because the writers knew if the German stopped and aimed, he'd have a much better chance at killing our main character. So this is the way we get our character out of it. Beautiful scene. This immediately takes me out of it. I go, okay, so he's getting out of here alive because this German has Down syndrome. And guess what? Even if you want to say this one German does, he runs away from four more Germans who all do the same thing. You're 10 feet behind him! Aim! What are you doing? Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this shot here. Who the fuck are you shit? It's, there's no tension. Instantly tension gone for me. Look at the other scenes. The scene where he's having a shootout with the sniper. How, did you see how he peeked that corner when he was shooting a sniper? He went, like bro, you would be D-E-A-D, -E dead, homie. If your character is in a situation where death is the solution, then rewrite the situation. I typed in 1917 review. I wanted to see people that liked it and why they liked it. I wanted to see people that disliked it and why they disliked it. And what made me happy was my boy Tarantino here, uh, probably my favorite director or one of them. He had a really awesome take. He was like, yeah, this, it, it, the, the one take thing I didn't like. He, like, he said that they didn't go for it hard enough. If you've ever watched a movie like this closely or if, you, if you're really into this shit, they're really obvious, all the hidden cuts. I can ignore that, 
But here's what he says about it briefly. That's that's not, you can't. Look, if you're going to do the whole thing about long cuts, then it's got to be about long cuts. Amen. I don't think this story, the way this was written, the way anything about this movie benefits from being a long cut. Tarantino says it best. You can watch this entire thing. Uh, Birdman exists is a fantastic movie where the plot benefits from it being shot that way. I don't think this movie benefits from it being a one take. Here's the only insulting thing I've said this whole time. I would call it normie bait. I would call it for the average moviegoer, it's bait. It's Bill Maher says it perfectly in this. He was so excited. He goes, how did the director do this with only putting one cut in? And Tarantino goes, what are you talking about? There were like 80 cuts. And he's like, what? How did he disguise it so well? And I'm like, yeah, you're, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. If anything I said resonated with you, maybe you'll like movies I recommend. Maybe we agree. Ultimately, um, at the end of the day, I think that, uh, I think we had a good uh, session here. I'd like to give my number review to it. I'm going to give this movie a 7 out of 10. It was a C. Uh, it is much closer to a 6 than an 8, and the only reason I bumped it up from a 6 is because of that ending scene. I would legitimately consider that ending scene perfect. I loved it. Its flaws are it was boring. I don't think it benefits from... Um, uh, the one take, I think it is, the, the writing is fine, the acting is fine, the cinematography is great, and the ending is amazing. 7 out of 10. Would I recommend it? Probably not. I would say, don't watch 1917, watch this war movie, or that war movie. I just think there's better war movies. The only purpose of this conversation, did I convince anybody to lower their rating? That's the question. Was I successfully able to win anybody over? No? I see a couple yeps, that's good enough for me.